The International Day of Biological Diversity is a celebration of all of the diversity of life on Earth. That goes from our genes and the genes in everything, all the way to species, habitats, ecosystems and the interactions between them. I forgot. The locust um, are very voracious. At the same time, they can they will they're historically known that they will not touch a neem tree. Uh, also, they will uh, be killed very quickly because uh, they will stop eating, they'll stop mating. And with locusts, the main thing is stopping mating, okay, because their, their, their mating cycle is very quick and once they have reached the fifth instar, they're flying and they're swarming. So it's most important to be able to stop their mating. The aims of the International Day of Biological Diversity are to draw attention to the importance of this wealth and treasure trove of assets for this planet. Um, Solutions in Nature refers specifically to the theme of this year, which is to explore how do we survive, how do we protect nature because it is the source of our lives, it's the source of our air, it's the source of our clean water, the source of our foods, all comes from biological diversity. It's really important that whatever we do on the landscape still protects the natural environment and the biological diversity. If we're farming, we don't need to clear every single square inch. We need to protect part of that landscape for conservation of biological diversity. <laughs> Our growing urban populations, especially here in Africa, are having a huge impact on our biological diversity across the whole nation. So it's really important that we recognize the interlinkages between urban areas and rural areas, and we put in place proper planning to make sure that we protect not just our urban populations, but all of the landscapes that they depend on.
Uh, we've seen the erratic climatic patterns. And this is really important because, you know, when you do have uh, long rains, uh, these cuts off some areas that, you know, animals can access. Also, in terms of drought, you know, the plants die out and then animals are forced to eat plants that they do not usually eat. So we did see this a couple of years ago where in areas such as Garissa, you know, animals died because they were eating on plants that they do not usually eat. Uh, these are the plants that they ate had high levels of a compound called tannins and that affected their biology and they died out. The people who live in our rural areas have never been rewarded for protecting these environments. These environments which attract millions of tourists. So there's an enormous economic basis for tourism in Kenya. And that is thanks to the communities who live and coexist with all this biodiversity. Uh,